16th consecutive winning record. The Big Red won eight and lost only three games. The Midlands and the nation saluted Nebraska football. The Cornhuskers were ranked in the top ten for the fifth consecutive season. Quarterback Dave Hum, offensive tackle Marv Crenshaw, and center Rick Bonas were all America selections. With defensive end Bob Martin and linebacker Tom Rude joining them as consensus all Big 8 choices. Defensive tackle Mike Fultz was named the Big 8 sophomore defensive player of the year. And fresh eye back Monty Anthony was named Big 8 freshman player of the year. And even though the Cornhuskers had to settle for second place in the Big 8 conference, coach Tom Osborne was voted NCAA District 6 coach of the year by the American Football Coaches Association for the outstanding job of guiding the Huskers to the runner-up spot and into their sixth consecutive major bowl. Backed by the finest fans in America, the Huskers set home and season attendance records, and more than 14,000 Redcoats followed the team to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. The 11th time in the past 13 years, the Nebraska team has been selected for a postseason game. There were many high spots for the Cornhuskers in 1974, Hum led the Big 8 in passing and total offense. Frosh Anthony took over the heavy rushing load when John O'Leary broke his jaw. The Huskers won three of four non-conference games, losing only to Wisconsin when Hum was injured. In the nation's toughest conference, the Huskers were upset by Missouri, but came back strong to challenge undefeated and number one ranked Oklahoma for the title. And the Huskers battled the Sooners to the wire before losing. Adding even more luster to the Husker season, was the announcement that Tom Rood, Rich Baugh, Stan Hegner, and George Kairos were named to the academic All-Big 18. Nebraska opened with Oregon and won 61-7, then dropped a heartbreaker to Wisconsin, 21-20. But the Huskers bounced back to whip Northwestern, 49-7, and Minnesota, 54-0, before entering the rugged Big 8 schedule. Pepped by those lopsided wins over Northwestern and Minnesota, the Huskers entered the Big 8 conference season against Missouri. At this point, Nebraska enjoyed a top 10 ranking and high hopes for a conference championship. But once again, Dave Hum was destined for injury. And the Tigers, fresh from a 59-20 loss at Wisconsin, proved to be Nebraska's nemesis. With Hum KO'd early in the third quarter, the Huskers foundered 21-10 when the Tigers roared from a 10-0 deficit with a three-touchdown barrage in the final minutes of the game. Nebraska's offense got off to a fine start, as demonstrated by Dave Gillespie's 11-yard gain right up the middle. Nebraska's black shirts were tough, too. Middle guard John Lee throws Missouri's Joe Stewart for a two-yard loss. As the first quarter ends, Husker quarterback Dave Hum is on target with a 14-yard completion to tight end Brad Jenkins. But the Husker drive stalls, and Big Red has to settle for three, on Mike Coyle's 32-yard field goal. Home run. And passes. But Dave was knocked unconscious on a 10-yard keeper play early in the third quarter. Again, the black shirt sparkled as defensive end Tom Pate intercepts the Missouri third quarter pass and returns it 14 yards. Quarterback Terry Luck, substituting for the injured hum, throws a 45-yard incomplete pass to split end Chuck Melito. However, Missouri's Rob Fitzgerald was called for defensive pass interference and Nebraska gets the ball on the Missouri eight-yard line. Locke takes to the air again, this time a 10-yard scoring pass to wingback Don Westbrook. Coyle's kick was good, and it's Nebraska 10, Missouri nothing, but still along 11-26 left in the game. Missouri sustains its first TD drive with plays like this 12-yard run by tailback Tony Galbraith. Substitute Missouri quarterback for Zarkowitz scores Missouri's first points, and suddenly it's NU 10, MU 7. After a Husker fumble, Zarkowitz puts the Tigers ahead with a TD pass to split end Mark Miller. Missouri leads 14 to 10, 
with 4-12 left to play. With time running out, Nebraska's luck was forced to gamble deep in his own territory. Missouri linebacker Steve Yount is there to intercept the pass intended for Nebraska end Larry Mashinsky. Galbraith takes it the final five yards, and Gibbons' kick concludes the day's scoring as Missouri heads home with a second major upset over Nebraska, 21-10. Stung by the 21-10 loss to Missouri and a loss in their first Big 8 game, the Huskers regrouped, battled back, and routed a fine Kansas team. Big Red did not expect a picnic at Lawrence, but the final 56 to nothing score made it look like a romp in the sunshine and a stroll through the woods. It was one of the Huskers' great conquests as Dave Hum attacked the Jayhawks in the record book in brilliant fashion. Recovering from the Missouri KO, Hum and his receivers combined for 23 of 27 completions, 15 straight, and two TD passes, all establishing Nebraska and Big 8 records. And his 15 straight completions also set a national record. The Huskers started toward their fourth win and their first Big 8 victory. After a standoff first quarter, Nebraska began to capitalize on its breaks. Punter Randy Lesman kicks to Kansas' Bruce Adams, who fumbles the ball, and Husker Chuck Melita was there to recover it on the KU 39-yard line. With 12 minutes, 10 seconds left in the half, Nebraska quarterback Dave Hum starts the scoring in his record-breaking performance with a seven-yard TD pass to wingback Donnie Westbrook, and it's NU7, KU nothing. The ever alert Husker linebacker Tom Rood stops a Kansas drive with his interception of a Scott McMichael pass at the NU 37 and returns it to the 41 yard line. Again, the NU black shirts prove awesome. As midway through the second quarter, defensive back Chuck Jones blocks a Kansas punt. After the Jayhawks attempt to advance the loose ball, Big Red gets it on its own 44-yard line. With 23 seconds left in the half, Hum survives a bruising pass rush. His last second release permits Westbrook to get behind the KU defense and pull in a 10-yard scoring pitch. Coil is true, and it's NU 14, KU nothing. Nebraska's opening second half drive goes all the way. On its final play, fullback Tony Davis takes it straight ahead from the one, adding to the Huskers total. Before the quarter ends, Hum and Westbrook team up again, this time on a three-yarder. And with one minute left in the third quarter, Nebraska leads Kansas 28 to nothing. It's the start of a big, big red fourth quarter as Husker defensive end Bob Martin blocks a KU punt and Nebraska gets the ball on the Jayhawk 25-yard line. This time, a healthy-looking John O'Leary has little trouble running it in from the one. Huskers 35, Jayhawks nothing. Blackshirt defensive end Dave Redding forces a quick pitch out by Kansas quarterback McMichael. It falls short, and safety Mark Heidorf covers the loose ball for Nebraska. This five-yard pass was Hum's 15th consecutive completion, a national and Big 8 record. And one more reason for his selection as a national, all Big 8, and all America back of the week. With 6.57 left in the game, Nebraska scores for the sixth time as Jeff Moran dives over a crowded line from one yard out. And it's NU 42, KU nothing. Black shirt pressure forces McMichael to hurry his pass, and it falls short into the hands of NU cornerback Jim Burrow. On this punt return of 47 yards, Husker Bobby Thomas dazzles the crowd as he sets the stage for Nebraska's final tally. On the final scoring play, I back Jeff Moran makes it look like a cakewalk as he takes a pitch out from Earl Everett and skirts unmolested around left end. Coyles 8 for 8 ends the scoring. Nebraska U 56, Kansas nothing. Buoyed by an impressive victory over Kansas, a sensational passing performance by Dave Hum and a return to the top ten. The Cornhuskers return to Memorial Stadium 
for a date with a physically and mentally tough Oklahoma State team that was to wind up with a Fiesta Bowl date as the season progressed. It was a key game for both teams' Big 8 title hopes. It was no secret that defense might be the key to the contest. In 1973, the two rivals had tied 17-17 at Stillwater. And both teams came into the game boasting outstanding defensive statistics as well as fine offensive potential. What transpired was one of the tightest, most exciting duels ever staged at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska's kicking game played an important part in the outcome of this close defensive battle. After Nebraska is stopped on its first possession, kicker Randy Lessman punched 68 yards to the Cowboys' 13-yard line. Late in the first quarter, Nebraska blackshirt Ardell Johnson comes up with the first of several outstanding defensive plays, a blocked field goal attempt by Cowboy Abby Daigle. And Jim Burrow returns it almost to the original line of scrimmage. As the first quarter is about to end, Nebraska's offense shows signs of life. On this inside reverse, wingback Donnie Westbrook scampers for 18 yards. The second quarter contains some fine hum passes. Here Dave rifles a 17-yarder to Husker split end Rich Baugh. A 25-yard pass play to Westbrook has the pokes in pursuit as he dashes, stops, cuts, and dives to the OSU 45. Another 25-yarder, this time to Husker tight end Larry Mashinsky. And in the third quarter, a 30-yard bomb to Bob. Big red fullback Tony Davis trots into the end zone from four yards out and the only TD of the day. Still in the third quarter, Dave hits Westbrook for a 54-yard completion. But the ball is knocked free and Cowpoke's Tony Buck recovers. The black shirts hold an OSU drive on NU's 15-yard line. And the Cowpokes claim three on Daigle's 32-yarder. Now it's NU7, OSU3. In a battle of the fullbacks, NU's Tony Davis, with help from a fine offensive line, gallops 25 yards in this fourth quarter play. Black shirt teamwork is shown in this tackle by Mons, Lee, and Rude. And it's Ardell Johnson who recovers this late fourth quarter OSU fumble. Ardell flicks a pass away from OSU quarterback Weatherby, intended for Cowboy receiver Ricky Taylor. And Oklahoma State's final drive is stopped by Husker cornerback Jim Burrow, who intercepts a Weatherby pass, and Big Red proved it could win the close one. After the close brush with disaster against Oklahoma State, it was time once again for the Cornhuskers, now 5-2 and two for the season, and back in the Big 8 race with a 2-1 mark, to hit the road. Neither fog nor threat of snow could stay Big Red fans from their destination, Boulder, and a meeting with arch-rival Colorado. The Buffs had shaken off a slow season start and were developing fast and a new coach, Bill Mallory, despite some injuries to key people. The game shaped up as another difficult hurdle for the Cornhuskers. But it was just one more in a line of must games, and the Huskers responded like the title contenders they were. Big Red scores during its first possession as Dave Hum hits tight end Larry Mashinsky with a TD pass. Husker fullback Tony Davis takes a pitch and then hits eye back John O'Leary with a 29 yard pass to spark a second touchdown drive for the Huskers. Quarterback Dave Hum fires a 16-yard pass to fullback Tony Davis. Eye back John O'Leary blasts over for the second NU touchdown. And with a successful two-point conversion, Nebraska leads 14 to nothing. 
Nebraska's defense shut out the Buffs for three quarters. And one of the reasons was a great rush on CU quarterback Dave Williams. This 28-yarder from Dave Hum to Larry Mashinsky sets up Mike Coyle's 37-yard field goal and gives Nebraska a 17-0 halftime lead. Nebraska twice stopped the Buffs near the Husker goal. Bob Nelson made the hit, and Mike Fultz recovered the Colorado fumble. After stopping the Buffs at the NU2, the Huskers stormed 98 yards to score, making it 24 to nothing. And the big play was this 55-yard run by fresh eye back Monty Anthony. Dave Hum gets his second TD pass of the game with his 16-yarder. And the Huskers take a 24-0 lead. Husker cornerback Ardell Johnson sets up Nebraska's last scoring drive with an interception of a Colorado pass at the Buff 47. The Huskers put the final whammy on the Buffs when John O'Leary gets a three-yard TD to give Nebraska a 31-0 lead with 21 seconds left in the third quarter. Next stop on the rugged trail was Ames, Iowa, for a crucial game with the always pesky Iowa State Cyclones. The last time at Ames, the Cyclones had engineered a 23-23 tie. And although Nebraska had not lost to the Cyclones since 1960, the return to the natural grass and the likelihood of a wet, muddy field caused much concern. And the weatherman came through with miserable conditions, heavy rain, and a muddy field throughout the contest. But the rampaging Huskers took charge early and piled up a 23 to nothing lead to ensure another notch on the 1974 gunstock. On Iowa State's first possession of the game, Cyclone quarterback Wayne Stanley fumbles, and it's recovered by Nebraska linebacker Bob Nelson on the ISU 16-yard line. Following a five-play drive after the fumble recovery, Nebraska scores on a three-yard run by Ibach Monty Anthony. Another first-quarter fumble by Iowa State is recovered by Nebraska tackle Ron Pruitt on the 50-yard line. Following a drive in the second quarter, Husker kicker Mike Coyle makes good in a 21-yard field goal, making the score NU 10, ISU nothing. An Iowa State drive late in the second quarter was stopped on a fumble recovery by Nebraska cornerback Ardell Johnson. Still in the second quarter, Nebraska safety George Kairos intercepts the pass on the NU 26-yard line. Early in the third quarter, Nebraska drives 34 yards on six plays and three penalties, scoring on a seven-yard run by Anthony. The Huskers' final score came with 4.30 left in the third quarter, when John O'Leary scored on a 42-yard pass from quarterback Dave Hum. Now only one hurdle remained before the showdown game with Oklahoma for the Big 8 title. Shootout four was just around the corner, but first was the tricky task of defeating Kansas State. While the Wildcats were winless in the Big 8 and had won only three games all season, the Cornhuskers, winners of seven games and carrying a number six national ranking, could not afford to look past Kansas State and risk a toast up before their clash with the Sooners. Oklahoma had beaten the Wildcats 63 to nothing. There would be comparisons, of course. Nebraska had some key people hurt. Split end Rich Baugh out with a hamstring pull. Center Rick Bonner slowed by a broken hand. But the Huskers were in no mood to provide an upset opportunity for the Wildcats and spoil the season's goal. In the first quarter, Nebraska eye back John O'Leary goes over left tackle for 19 yards.
Husker fullback Tony Davis goes over left guard for 13 more. The Huskers score with 147 left in the first quarter when Dave Hum hits wingback Don Westbrook with an 18 yard toss. Score Nebraska 7, Kansas State nothing. Nebraska scores again. This time, I back Monty Anthony goes over left tackle for five yards and scores with 12.58 left in the first half. NU 14, KSU nothing. Early in the third quarter, Nebraska built its lead to 20 to nothing as Hum hits tight end Brad Jenkins with a 37 yard pass. Still in the third quarter, Hum hits Westbrook with a 23 yard pass. On the next play, Westbrook runs an inside reverse for 14 yards. A Davis fumble in the end zone is recovered by Nebraska tackle Mark Doak for the score. Nebraska 28, Kansas State nothing. In the fourth quarter, Westbrook runs an outside reverse for 23 yards. High back Jeff Moran goes around right end for the Huskers final TD score Nebraska 35 Kansas State 7 and finally after weeks of hard work hoping anticipation and excitement the Cornhuskers completed their comeback climb it was time for Oklahoma shootout four as the news media called it a chance to win the big eight title en route to the Sugar Bowl and that big date with a fine Florida team Nebraska Oklahoma that matchup always stirs the blood of the nation's football fans. And 1974 was no exception. The Sooners were undefeated in 19 games and were ranked number one by the Associated Press. The Cornhuskers, tapped by a five-game winning streak and ranked number five by the UPI and number six by AP, were two touchdown underdogs. But they were to put up the fight of their lives before a record crowd of 76,636 chilled fans. And they almost pulled off the impossible dream by pulling out all the stops. Nebraska's defense gets a solid stop on Sooner All-America Joe Washington early in the contest. Husker Jimmy Burrow stops a Sooner drive by intercepting a Steve Davis pass. Dave Hum connects on his first pass of the game. A 13-yarder to tight end Brad Jenkins. Both teams missed early field goals. And then Oklahoma took advantage of a short NU punt into the high wind to launch a 48-yard scoring drive, capped by a 10-yard TD run by Steve Davis. Nebraska came right back with an 80-yard drive and tied the Sooners on a tricky Dave Hum to Chuck Melito scoring pass with 7.48 left in the second quarter. Just before halftime, Dave Hum rips off his longest run of the season, 24 yards to the Sooner 49. Nebraska took the second half kickoff and drove 76 yards to score, with the TD coming on a razzle-dazzle pitch to John O'Leary, who then fired an 11-yard pass to quarterback Dave Hum, his first reception and his first scoring pass ever. Nebraska led 14 to 7. Back roared the Sooners, and 14 plays later, Joe Washington scored on a four-yard run. Following an Oklahoma fumble recovery, Joe Washington's pass is intercepted by Husker defensive back George Kairos. Kairos again stops the Sooners when he recovered an Oklahoma fumble at the Husker 12-yard line. Oklahoma surges ahead 21-14 early in the last period, 
when Elvis Peacock scores on a one-yard run. The final score came when Sooner quarterback Steve Davis hit pay dirt with 8.36 remaining. Sooners 28, Huskers 14. Towards the end of the game, Nebraska tries a comeback. Dave Hum hits Chuck Melita with an 18-yard pass. Still moving, Hum spots split end Rich Baugh in the open and completes a 14-yard pass to the senior from Fremont, Nebraska. Hum pass to John O'Leary for 13 yards. But following an interception, Oklahoma ran out the clock. Final score, OU 28, NU 14. Then to climax an outstanding 1974 season, the Nebraska Cornhuskers defeated the Florida Gators 13 to 10 on New Year's Eve in the Sugar Bowl, thus joining Georgia Tech as the only two college teams in history to win six consecutive bowl games. 1974 indeed was a great year for Nebraska football as the Cornhuskers distinguished themselves on and off the field. And as the winter months turn to spring, all Nebraskans will once again start looking toward next fall and the annual bout Big Red Fever.